Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can create this loop in Blender with geometry nodes. So let's get started. First hit Shift A and add a plane. Go to geometry nodes and click on new. Delete the group input, add a grid and Alt Shift click on it. Also add a transform node and set the X and Y scale to 0.75. Now we need an extrude mesh node. Put that here and let's also add a wave texture and plug the color into the offset scale. We also need to set the vertices here to 20, by the way. Set it from X to Z. Now add a gradient texture and set it to radial and plug the color into the vector. Add a vector rotate node and set that to Z. Plug the vector into the vector. We also need a position node. Let's plug that into the vector here. Let's go back to the wave texture and set the scale to 0.05. Now if we change the angle here, we've got something like this. Hover over the angle and press I. And here let's open a new window and set it to timeline. I'm going to set the end frame to 100. Now go to frame 101 and set the angle to 360 and keyframe it again. To see the keyframes, you need to make sure that the node and the object are both selected. Now press A and T and make it linear. This will stop the animation from splitting up at the beginning and slowing down at the end. I'm going to close this again. Take the group output and bring it over here. Now let's save. Add a subdivision surface node. And let's put that here. I'm going to set the level to 3. I don't recommend that you play the animation now. Set the edge crease to 0.4. Add a set shade smooth node. And put that here. Now add an instance on points node. And let's also add a grid and plug the mesh into the points and use this as the instance. Set the size to 3 and the vertices to 5. Now add a set material node and let's go to the material properties, click on new and select it here. Save again and go to shading, go into rendered view. You can use Cycles or Eevee for this. I'm going to use Eevee. If you are using Eevee, make sure that Ambient Occlusion, Bloom and Screen Space Reflections are enabled. Go to the World Properties, go to Color and set it to Environment Texture. I'm going to put a link to the one that I'm using in the description. Set the Strength to 5. And now here, let's set this to Black. Set the Metallic to 1 and the Roughness to 0. Add a Noise Texture and press Ctrl T. Let's use the object output. Set the scale to 1000 and the detail to 15. Plug the factor into the normal and add a bump node. Set the strength to 0 0.01. And here let's use the height. Go back to layout mode. With the plane selected, press delete on the numpad and 1. And now press 6 on the numpad and 8. Hit Shift A and add a camera. Control or 0 to go into camera view and press G and set twice to move it on the local Z axis. I'm also going to press G and Y twice to move it like this. In the object data properties, enable the path field and select the plane. I'm going to set the f stop to 0.6. Set the blades to 16 and the focal length to 100. Now let's press G and set twice again. And I'm going to position it here. In the output properties, I'm going to set the frame rate to 60. If you want to use a different frame rate, I recommend that you use a different end frame. If you want to change the end frame, then don't forget to change the position of the last keyframe for this node here. Also, don't forget to position the keyframe one frame after the animation ends so that it loops properly. One more thing that you can do before rendering is to go to the render properties, go to color management, Set the fusions from to filmic and the look to very high contrast. You don't have to do this, of course. If you decide to do it, then after rendering, set the fusions from back to standard and the look to none. If you don't reset these options, then they will be applied again when compiling the images. If you want to, you can go to render and enable lock interface. Now let's create a new folder for the images. I'm going to set the file format to JPEG and the quality to 100%. This will make rendering a little bit faster. Save again and press Ctrl F12. Once it's done rendering, hover over the file location and press Ctrl C. Make sure you are on frame 1 and go to video editing. Set the file format to FFmpeg video the encoding container to MPEG-4 and the output quality to high quality. Here hit Shift-A and click on image sequence. If you can't find the folder here, then just paste in the location minus the name and hit enter. 
Press A and enter. Don't forget to go to color management and set the fill transform to standard and the look to none. Save again and press Ctrl F12. If you liked this tutorial, then you're probably also going to like the one that is on screen now. I'll see you next time.